we have now talk on immersive visualization technologies uh, in order to support digital twins uh, within the concept of uh, also the destination Earth. Uh, Nino, uh, for, as director of EGI, uh, CGI, sorry, Italy, uh, will uh, present us uh, his activities uh, within uh, within the digital twins uh, in the context of Destination Earth, and he will especially focus on the ECMWF projects uh, that have been implemented on top of that. The floor is yours. Thanks very much, Chairman. Thanks very much for giving me this opportunity. So nowadays we're all speaking about climate change adaptation. We're speaking about extreme events. Unfortunately, we witness the damages and uh, the, the efforts of all these things. And um, there are a lot of different stakeholders that are dealing with this complex phenomena. Uh, what we are trying to do is to try and find a common language uh, which can put together different stakeholders that sometimes need to interact with each other. And these are very diverse because some of these are like many of us here in this room, you know, practitioners, experts, scientists, people that really know about the data. But then there are others that are decision makers, and uh, they're very important because they do take the decisions. But they, they, they need to have some solid base based on which they can make these decisions. And they don't have really the grasp uh, of the scientific meaningfulness of the data. So they, they need to have some device to really understand what's going on. And then there is the general public, the media, um, the education community, so a lot of different community. We're all speaking about similar things, but maybe with different languages. So this is quite interesting because it's a bit of fun, is what we call the hard fun, the serious fun. So where we are trying to use uh, uh, technology and the devices from the gaming industry to make these things uh, interesting. And let's see if we can make it. Okay, so the background is, of course, we are talking about the Destination Earth. I think all this session is about it. Uh, and this is a project which is uh, sponsored by ECNWF as part of the overall envelope. Uh, generally speaking, the Destination Earth project uh, managed by ECNWF are of different kinds. There are the digital twin engines that I'm sure all of you know on the climate change adaptation and weather extremes, they produce massive amounts of data. Then there are the use cases application, which are very important because our customization, vertical customization of this data to try and understand how the impact is on the cities and uh, on the environment, on flooding, on extreme event and uh, all of that. And then there is immersive visualization, which is what this project is about. I am running CGI Italy. Uh, I have the pleasure to share in this project, um, my work with this Privia, which is the frame contractor, and then there is also Meo and CMCC that are complementing the, um, the team. Um, I think I spoke about that already, uh, so this slide is just complementing what I just said with some nice pictures. Um, one of the things which I didn't say, but, but I think is very important, is also to have a common playground where also scientists and practitioners that speak the same language but are focusing on different projects can interact. What we are trying to do in this project is also to bring humans at ECNWF and these are more closely together and put their data together into a tool where they can see how these different data interact and create simulation and uh, analytics. And then we need the engagement of the shareholders or the stakeholders, sorry. Um, as I said, multiple type of stakeholders and uh, the way we are trying to make this more live, more attractive, more interesting for everybody is to use the gaming industry devices. So basically our project allows the people to walk through the data using helmets, using HoloLens, all these sort of devices by which you can really feel like you are in the middle of a hurricane and uh, stuff like that. It will be difficult for me to give this feeling today because of course I'm going to show a video on the screen but next week there is going to be uh, a presentation in, the, in Bonn at the, the second user exchange for Destination Earth, where together with my colleagues from Ispiriva and other colleagues, we will have a, a live demo so people can go there and wear the helmet and uh, see this data. Um, we all know that there is an issue of scale. 
So this data is not only huge, not only very complex, but there is a lot of variety, different type of data and different type of skills. Okay, sometimes we want to look at phenomena at a global level, sometimes we want to look at phenomena at a very local level, for instance, for managing cities. One of the challenges that I will talk about is to try and make this performant, fluid, efficient. And actually, these are the challenges. I spoke about some of them already, and in this picture you can see an example of a typical stereotype of a scientist and you know, the media people. We want to create a tool which can work for all of them. Um, flexibility is important because we need to deal with very different type of data, but also the data has to be accurate. One of the challenges that we face in the very beginning of the project is you know, talking to scientists and they say, this is all very nice, but we like to have 2D traditional representation because these are very accurate. We are used to work with that, and we want to have the last digit of accuracy of our data. But we can deliver the same. We can deliver the same even in the virtual reality representation. So it's not just a simulation of a game of the things. We are using the gaming te techniques, but the actual data, if you inspect the data, if you click on the data using whatever device, the mouse or you know, your glasses or whatever, the value are the real value. Okay? And then, of course, we spoke about attractiveness and performance, which is also an important issue. Uh, in order to improve the performance, we put together a data processing pipeline, which I'm not going to describe in detail, but of course, I mean, if you have a lot of questions or if you have any curiosity, you can ask a question after, visit our booth, uh, the CGI booth, which is in the exhibition, and I'll be very happy to explain all of these things to you. Um, in the processing pipeline, basically what we do is we have a, a sourcing of the data using some APIs provided by ACNWF and the other tools of the Destination Earth. And sometimes we do a caching of the data in order to prepare the data and make the data suitable for visualization so that it can be more uh, performant. Um, and then there are some visualization examples. Um, I have some static examples. Uh, but then I also have a video, uh, so I will briefly present these tactic as examples, and then I will show you a video which is probably going to be a little bit more attractive. Um, we are presenting, for instance, uh, wave height in different uh, means uh, for showing the, the Medicaid. The Medicaid is a, I learned this in this project, is a hurricane. We are used to use the hurricane, but hurricane normally what happens in America, and when it happens on the Mediterranean, we use this neologism, this new word, because this thing didn't exist before, and this is yet again one sign of the climate that is changing. So now we have hurricane-like things happening in the Mediterranean, and this is an event which happened near Greece where we are showing some of this data. Um, here we are going to have some other visualization examples. I'm going to briefly uh, explain the, them during the video that I hope will start. Okay, so again, this is the um, Medicaid representation. Um, this is a show, so basically is uh, the data that is time tagged. And so in this time series of the data, which are produced by the digital twin engines, we grab the data, the data are moving in time, but while the data are played back in time, and you can stop, accelerate, go back and forth in your simulation, you can also move virtually across the data. So you can move the viewpoint, by moving your mouse in case you are on top of a computer or by you know, using any device if you are in a virtual reality environment. In this case, we are showing volumetric data, uh, which are representing the humidity alongside a wave height, which is uh, exaggerated. Of course, you can put as many data as you want together. Uh, after a certain amount of data, it will become a little bit cluttered. But the interesting thing is that we try to grab all this phenomenon and to show them in a way that it can be useful, as I said in the beginning, for different communities, for the scientists, for the media, and to really give an impressive uh, visualization of what is, in this case, this is the wind, for instance. No? And, uh, but the wind is represented in 3D because it's 3D plus time, so eventually it's 4D. Okay. Um, and then, uh, uh, yes, this is quite an interesting one. This is about energy and this is about renew renewable energy. In this case, we are representing with this sort of small histogram the demand and the supply of data at some point. These are, again, data that are produced by the digital twin engines. 
and these are real data produced by, by them, which we grab and we display. Along this dashed line, you see uh, the transmission of the energy from one point to another, and then you can superimpose any other data uh, on top of each other, uh, like, for instance, the wind, the solar radiation, okay? This type of simulation can be useful for different things. You can use them for planning because you can plan to establish a new, it's like geomarketing. When you want to open a new shop, where would you open it? Would you open it in a place where you have more customer, where we have, you have more demand and supply? And this is the same concept. So basically, if you want to establish or to plan a new plant, you look at time series of climatic data, you look at solar radiation, wind, all of these things, and you can understand where to better position yourself. Also in terms of exchange of energy with your peers, because you might want to be in a situation where you can sell your energy and have a, a business out of it. I think that's the end of my presentation, so thanks very much for your attention. Thank you for your presentation uh, about this visualization topics. Uh, are there questions in the audience available? There's one. Hi, thanks very much for the presentation. I have a quick question. Um, I've been working on a few projects when the VR thing is kind of started. And um, back then we had problems that a significant percentage of our users when they were working with it for a prolonged time got nauseated. Is, did you still experience problems with that or with the new uh, devices or is this now a solved problem? You mean technological problems or? You no, know, when they were interacting with, uh, well, there was one we had a simulation game and we also had the data visualization that would become nauseated after some time. So they had to put down the helmet and rest for a couple minutes yeah, at least. Yeah. Okay, so one thing I didn't mention is that we are using, a, well, I sort of hinted to it, we are using gaming engine, rendering engine which are very powerful. And uh, as you can imagine, the gaming indu industry is one of the more uh, healthy business uh, nowadays. So they are really investing a huge amount of money. Uh, no, we don't have this problem anymore. I mean, there are two issues. One is the data sourcing, okay? And this is an issue that we from Earth Observation community face all the time, no? So there is a lot of about intelligent caching, not duplicating too much data, but caching the data when you need, uh, subsampling the data, using the right resolution, this is one thing. The other thing is the technology, which uh, nowadays is no longer a bottleneck. Thank you. There's another question around, over there. Thanks for this very nice presentation. I was wondering a little bit, one problem that we often fit. Sorry, well, can you hear me or, yeah. Okay. I can, but. Okay, uh, I was wondering a little bit about uh, the volume of data that you can have dynamically in when you do these visualizations because one of the problems that we have with the EO data, with the high resolution, these are quite large volumes and the challenges I've seen in all these dynamic visualizations is to really deal with large data cubes that go into the giga to terabyte order uh, and how to visualize them dynam dynamically. We, with the climate data, it's mostly easier because they're coarser resolution, so you can more easily deal with this, but how do you deal with this challenge, the volume yeah. of data, and how okay. much can you handle right now? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> as much as your bandwidth allows, that's <laughs> the, the short answer, uh, but in terms of concept, there are two elements that are worth uh, describing. One is the multi-resolution and the level of caching that we use. Now, I don't remember how many caching levels there are, but for sure there are at least three type of cache. One is when we do the data sourcing, one is when we do the data preparation, and another one is managed by the rendering engine itself. Okay, so it's all about learning how to set the parameters of these caching things to be able to, to, to render a fluid visualization. So in the end, of course, I mean, if you have massive amount of data uh, streaming, then the, the bottleneck becomes uh, the network, which is normally something which we don't control. Because of that, we have introduced, there wasn't time to describe this one, but we have introduced the concept of a show. Basically, before having a display like that, uh, there is a user which is typically a, an expert user who is like a, a director of a movie, he prepares a movie, 
So we grab all the data, visualize all the data in reduced resolution, puts them all together, like the case of the hurricane. Uh, and once he likes the data, there is an opportunity to click on a button and to grab all the data and to cache them locally. And maybe this is gonna be, I don't know, one terabyte of data, it's not a lot, but you cannot do this in real time. So the bottleneck is the network. But if you prepare the data in advance, then uh, there is no issue. Okay, I think uh, we need to stop now. Uh, also many thanks for the questions and also the uh, uh, detailed answers. So thanks again, thanks again. and we move on.